Support local. This was one of my points of emphasis when I started on my fashion journey, and I've made good on that, I think. Today, we'll be taking a look at pieces from the following Filipino brands. Team Manila, Gnarly, MN Plus LA, Nobody Clothing, Arapila, Chapter, The Modern Tannery, and Artwork. At the end, I'll also talk about some brands that I don't own anything from, but have caught my interest. For reference, I'm about 5'7 and 125 pounds. Cool? Cool. One of the first Filipino brands I checked out was Team Manila slash Daily Grind. This is one of the bigger brands out there and one that I'd actually already heard of even before getting into fashion. I picked up a couple of their West Philippine Sea t-shirts in medium, one in red for 625 pesos and the other in black at a discounted price of 485 pesos. Unfortunately, I didn't yet have the experience to know what t-shirt measurements would fit me well. These are listed as regular fitting but I would say they're more slim fitting. The sleeves are much too short and the body is quite tight. Going up a size would probably be no good either since the length would then be too big. I've already sold one of these and I'm hoping to do the same with the other. Later on, I rolled the dice once again with an online t-shirt purchase, this time from the brand Gnarly. I got two tees, both at a 25% discount. The orange one cost me 487 pesos, while the black cost 525. Once again, I'm not 100% satisfied with the fit on these two tees, but they do at least fit looser than the Team Manila ones. What's strange is that the two tees, despite both being size medium, fit differently. The orange is looser and the black one has this really strange collar. It feels very tight and when you look at it off body, something seems off. Usually, the back of the collar on a t-shirt is higher than the front but here they're kind of even. This makes the collar sit quite uncomfortably close to the front of my neck like I'm being strangled a little bit. You do eventually stop noticing it but once you get reminded, you're right back there getting slightly strangled. I've kept these two for now and I do wear them on occasion but they're not my favorite. I may end up selling them off. I briefly showed this next piece in my previous video about my shoe collection. It's the shirt I wore to my wedding and it's from a brand called MN Plus LA or Manila Meets Los Angeles. The listing for it no longer exists but from what I can remember, this is a linen blend Cuban Guayabera shirt and it cost me 970 pesos at full price. When looking for what to wear to my wedding, I was very drawn to modernized barongs. The barong is the traditional formal wear for men here in the Philippines. Designers like Gabi Sarenas, Kelvin Morales, Randolph and Retiala have stunning pieces in this vein but they all cost way more than I'm able to afford so I kept a close lookout for cheaper alternatives. I learned that the Guayabera is traditional formal wear in many countries so this shirt from MN plus LA seemed perfect. I really wanted something with some sort of embroidered design though so I resolved to learn hand embroidery and just do it myself. Unfortunately, I had a pretty hard time deciding where to place the embroidery on the shirt. The front pleats really limited where I could embroider. The pockets would have been ideal locations, but it was challenging to embroider them. I would have had to go through the pocket into the fabric behind it, thus closing the pocket, and I didn't really want to do that. I eventually ended up embroidering a design made by my wife on both sleeves. I think it turned out great, but I do wish I'd been able to do something more elaborate. I'm definitely going to be doing some more embroidering on clothes in the future. Going back to the shirt itself, I ordered a size small based on the measurements on the MN plus LA website, but it's a tad bit smaller than I'd have liked. If I could do it all over again, I'd probably go with a size medium. I feel like this style can only really be worn tucked out since the pockets get included in the tuck and it looks kind of awkward so that does detract from the versatility of the piece. The embroidery also made it difficult to style so I decided to just remove it. This is the Milagros shirt from Nobody Clothing. I got it in pink for 950 pesos. It's upcycled from blankets, popular in Filipino homes, and is also available in other colors and in a cropped silhouette through pre-order batches. I must confess that I was not familiar with these blankets when I made my purchase, so I wasn't driven by any sort of nostalgia. I just really liked the look of it. I picked it up in a size medium and the fit is great on me. I also love how soft the material is. This is a pretty bold, eye-catching piece, so I did initially feel a bit self-conscious when I first wore it but I got acclimated pretty quickly. It's pretty versatile too. I think it looks great top or untop, open or closed. More upcycling coming your way from the brand Arapila with their Pablo shirt made from flower sack fabric at 599 pesos. I picked this up in a size XL based on their size chart measurements but something seems to be a little bit off with the fit of it on me. The sleeves seem very big and poofy for some reason. My wife thinks it looks fine though. 
Let me know what you think. When you order from them, you'll get to choose the fabric they use to create your piece. I do love the look of mine, but it does seem to have a lot of flaws. There's a lot of patches and rows of holes. And yes, I get that this is upcycled, and they do say that these are all normal, but my wife bought an old Arapilak shirt secondhand that has almost none of these flaws. That one is in size large, and the previous owner said that it shrunk from the wash. Arapilak says that it's from 2020 to 2021 and is no longer available. If you're familiar with my Instagram, at Kaloy's Closet, follow me, then you've probably seen this bag, a brown corduroy tote bag from Chapter PH. Ever since I picked this up for 450 pesos, I believe, it's been my go-to bag. And the brand noticed. They sent me even more of their bags to check out. This one is the same model as my brown one, but in black. This one is a drawstring bag in tan. This one is a small sling bag in green, similar to the popular one from Uniqlo. And finally, something not corduroy, a puffer tote bag in this bluish-white color. I expected this to be made of a synthetic material, but it seems to be fully cotton. That probably means it's not quite as water repellent, but it does make it nice and soft. They also sent me a corduroy jacket and olive. It's kind of like a denim jacket in style. Shout out to Chapter for sending me this stuff, despite my double digit follower count. I'm not super happy with this ratchet belt box set I picked up from the modern tannery for 1,450 pesos. In theory, a ratchet belt is great for a few reasons. You avoid the look of worn out belt holes, you have the freedom to micro adjust the fit, and it's easier to put on and take off. In practice though, there are a few issues. The leather strap I got is too wide for the buckle for some reason. Like you can get it to go through, but just barely. It takes a bit of force to pull it through, which negates the whole ease of getting on and off. To their credit, I contacted the modern tannery about my issues, and they did suggest some fixes. They told me to bend the belt like this to make it easier to pull through. And this does work to a certain extent, but it's not perfect, and you do have to do it over and over again. It just seems like a workaround for bad design. I also got this olive canvas strap, and this one doesn't have any issues with going through the buckle. The problem I had with it was with the whole cutting it to length thing. The fabric frayed once cut, and this made it a nightmare to get on the buckle. The modern tannery told me that you have to burn the fabric. I did actually do this already and I knew to do this because I'd previously done some paracord crafts and this is what you do to seal the ends of those. I guess I just didn't burn it for long enough. I can't imagine what a different customer who doesn't have this kind of experience or equipment would do. They might have to go out and get themselves a lighter just for this one use. Anyway, I thought I'd get more use out of this olive strap but I pretty much just kept the black leather one on for the entire time I've had these. So all in all, pretty disappointing. I kind of want to just get another one of these leather mesh belts from Uniqlo but in black to replace these modern tannery ones. One of these days, I'm actually going to get something from Ame Leondor instead of just going for a budget alternative, which is what this green cap from Artwork is. ALD have some really beautiful green caps, and to me, this Artwork one scratches kind of the same itch for me at a much, much lower price of 499 pesos. Artwork has been around forever, it seems. I remember them being quite big during the 2000s. It seems like they've lost a lot of that popularity, but they are still alive and kicking. There are a lot of other local brands I'm interested in. One of the biggest ones is Don't Blame the Kids. I'd love to pick something up from them, but for some reason their sizing runs quite big. They had some nice shirts in their fast flight release, but even the smallest sizes of those would have been too big for me. Another big name brand is Straightforward, who sell modern basic clothes as well as faux leather products. I've been looking to get some kind of polo shirt and Straightforward has some nice candidates. Scoop Community is a brand I discovered pretty early on in my fashion journey, and at the time, their stuff didn't really stand out to me. But I've since revisited the brand and have found a couple of really nice pieces that I'd love to add to my wardrobe. First, these color block shorts in one of two colorways. And second, a reversible bucket hat, also color block, also in one of two colorways. Let me know which of the two colorways for these two products you think I should get. The bucket hat is quite expensive, but you do basically get two hats for the price of one. Some more brands you might want to check out are Animal, Fortune WWD, Milkware, Van Gore, Antibiotic Smile, and Charlotte Folk. And if there are any other brands you think I should check out, please let me know in the comments. And that concludes my look at some Filipino clothing and fashion brands. What do you think of the pieces and brands I featured? Do you own any of these pieces as well? How do you style them? Let us know in the comments. Once again, I'm on Instagram at Kaloy's Closet where my wife posts reels from our daily adventures. It's very different from what I do here on YouTube. Please check it out if that sounds interesting to you. Thanks for watching.